Welcome back. It's time to get the controller to work here. Uh, so right now we have buttons that, that don't work, but of course we have 10 buttons to, to listen to here. Uh, and we also, of course, want to see how we refer to our model. So I got things working on my emulator. Turns out that we had some problems. Pretty minor ones, but what had happened is is the in the tic-tac-toe game, I had called these guys xwin and owin. And I think when we defined them in X in the, the strings.xml, we had put them as X wins and O's wins. So go ahead and, and, and fix that if you would. It uh, doesn't matter which one you fix, uh, just, just so that they're consistent. And then the errors here should go away. And then you should be able to run it in an emulator if you wanted to, to get to what I have. All right, but what I want to do is, is, uh, is go to main activity. And we want to set up some, some listeners here. Now, ultimately, kind of interesting. Uh, you know, if I think where, where I'd be going with this, there's, there's a few different things that, that have to happen, right? So whenever I click a button, uh, it's going to affect both the model and the view, right? So if I click one of these tic-tac-toe buttons here, then it should, it should tell the model, hey model, that space was uh, pressed. Go ahead and update which mark is being stored uh, under the hood. Um, and then it wants to tell the view that it should change the text on the buttons, of course, so that the, the, new, the, the new mark is displayed, but also that maybe the turn changes, right? So we need to see that there. Uh, the new game button, what should that do? It should tell the game to, to reset. Uh, and then, of course, it's going to have to update the view. So the model's going to change, so everything is blanked out again. And then the view is going to um, have to change as well. Um, so what kind of setup do we have to do? right? So we're going to have to create an instance of the model uh, so we can refer to it and then capture the buttons and, and add the listeners. Now, it's, it's going to be worth uh, looking at here that <coughs> um, that our on click, right, is is kind of interesting. Uh, on click, we can we can look at at the view. When you have multiple views, uh, you're going to have to look at them by by their ID, right? So it could be, um, you know, which which button was pressed. Was it the new game button? If so, do something. Well, was it that first button? We'll go ahead and 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 press the button at that location. Was it the set, second button? So on, and all the way through through these nine buttons. And you might ask yourself, you know. Can we do better than this, right? Do we really want to be copy and pasting so much code? Uh, and of course, we, we could try to get around it uh, by using a 2D array. And we'll be able to, to do most of that with an array, uh, but not everything. All right, back to Eclipse. All right, so let's capture um, our different things here. So I'm going to have a, 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 a text view for this guy. And I'm going to have my buttons, right? So, so text view and this guy is going to be my game state text view remember how to capture remember what method we we call yeah you got it it's it's find view by id all right um, r dot id dot and we should have had a game state text view there right. uh, and of course cast it to be a text view so that it matches import text view right. looks great I want to do the same thing for the buttons. Uh, so the buttons are going to be a 2D array. Uh, we can make them here. So, so button 2D array. Buttons is a new 2D array. And of what size? I mean, it should be 3 by 3. But somehow it seems that we want to refer to our, our model object here. So maybe we can do that. So what if we say tick tack toe game dot number of rows? All right. So in case ever you know anyone wanted a, a game that was bigger than than three by three, would have to min would minimize the number of changes we'd have to make. All right. So we're we're gonna have a three by three board here. We'll go ahead and Im import button, and let's see. Button can't be resolved to a type, so let's import it. All right, looks looks good. And now we want to set uh, listeners for these guys. So, well, before the the listeners, uh, I guess we we haven't captured the buttons themselves yet. So, what would it look like here? So, buttons zero one dot. Well, we want to capture them here. So this guy is whoops is equal to cast to a button of find view by id r dot id dot and we labeled them uh, smartly here so actually I should have done zero zero first 
Um, so we could do that. Now, capturing, you know, we, we have nine different buttons in our UI, so we're going to have to capture all of them separately. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so go ahead and take a minute and, and copy and paste here. I'll do this on my own. Okay, looks okay. Um, so what have I done? So I've, so I've stored these in, in a 2D array. It's gonna save me a lot of work because now, now that I have them in the array, I don't have to set listeners nine, you know, nine different times in, in a row. I can actually do this uh, using a loop here. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, for i goes from zero to uh, tic-tac-toe game dot number of rows, i plus plus. And we'll our inner loop inside there, since we got a 2D array, j goes from zero to tic-tac-toe game dot num columns. All right, and then within here, we wanna take each of these guys. So buttons, uh, i, j, dot set, on click listener. All right, and I want kind of the same logic for, for each one. Um, I'm going to do the things a little bit different here. I'm going to have the class as a whole respond. So a little bit different paradigm for us here. We're going to, we're going to say that uh, pass in this uh, to be the responder. And of course, it's not going to like that. So it's saying that, that, um, that this method is not applicable for, our, for main activity. So main activity is not yet a listener. So if we click on that, all right, one of the last options here we check all these is to let main activity implement on click listener. All right, so all that did is, is type these two words for us here, um, that now our activity implements on click listener instead of making an anonymous one. And then of course, remember on click listeners need to have what kind of method for the interface? That's right, on click. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Eclipse will help us out. So if we if we click this here, add unimplemented methods, uh, we'll see that, that down bottom, it's created us an on click. All right. Now again, this is this is one on click that refers to the entire uh, every every button that has a, a listener, right? So all nine of these guys are going to come in here. So we're going to need to put in some some logic uh, to check essentially to see whether if the views ID, right? Because how would we distinguish between them uh, is equal to the buttons, right? Uh, the buttons here ID. So something like that. Uh, so what do we have? So first of all, this guy's gonna have to go in a loop so we can loop over all nine of them to see which one is, is there. And the other thing is it has no idea what buttons are because buttons were de declared here as a, as a local variable. So let's refactor this and, and make this guy a field here. All right. So I'm gonna put buttons up top. And since it's a field, I'm gonna re, uh, let's see. Well, let's keep it as buttons for now. And then take out this declaration right here that's important so it doesn't shadow uh, looks good and since this is a, uh, a field now I want to rename it as, as my buttons um, so up here in the refactor I can do refactor rename as alt shift R and let's just take change this to be M buttons all right wouldn't want to change them all otherwise um, I was saying we have some some syntax errors what's it complaining about let's let's go ahead and fix this uh, sure, it didn't like what we had here. Well, it's okay because I'll just comment it out for now. Don't need it anyway right now. Alt Shift R, my buttons. Great, looks good. Uh, while I'm here, make this guy private. The game state text view, since the buttons, when we click them down here, they're going to be changing the game state. Uh, then I should probably make this a, a, a field as well. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So pop it up here, 
make it private, take out the declaration here, and then say my game state text view, something like that. Uh, and let's see, let's let's use let's use the refactoring to do this. Shift R, my game state text view. All right, uh, looks decent. So, so now let's check to see which which one of these buttons was was pressed here. So, I'm gonna have a loop, and honestly, the same loop as I had here. So, copy and paste that loop in, except that the guts are gonna be different. All right, so loop over all the buttons and ask if the view that was clicked, so that's this parameter right here, if v dot get id double equals, all right, the id of, of our button. So let's let's check this, m buttons uh, i j dot get id. All right, so if that's the case, uh, then we wanna, we wanna tell the model to update. Okay, let's get rid of this here. All right, so how do we how do we tell the model to update? Right, how how is that going to work? Uh, well, I guess we haven't even made an instance really of tic tac toe game yet, so we should probably do that. Uh, we're going to construct it inside on create and then refer to it from the other method. So we'll make it a, a field also. So private and the name of the class was tic tac toe game. Uh, I call this uh, my game. In my constructor here, I can say my game equals. Now let's see, tic tac toe game. If you remember, I had a constructor, right, right here that took a context as a parameter. So I want to make a new tic tac toe game, and a context uh, is actually just going to give us some information so that when we call like get string, it knows well what you know from from uh, from what activity, or what class, you know what, what's what's going on here. So, I'll give you a hint. Generally, the activity itself is going to work. So we're going to pass in this, all right? And that'll be fine. All right. So, referring to our model, let's go down back to on click, and we want to tell the model to update. So we have a my game that we have access to now, and we're going to say, hey, I pressed a button at this location. And it takes a row and a column, right? So in our case, it's ij, uh, making me regret the, the use of, of i and j here. i is, is just my row counter, and j is the, the, the column counter. Uh, that's easy enough to fix. Alt-Shift-R, change this guy to row, and j, Alt-Shift-R to refactor, change this guy to column. Okay, so we've we've told the the model to update. Um, I guarantee if we ran the program right now that it would that it would not do any sort of update, right? Um, but what it would do instead is is it would have hidden data right in the model that's going to be updated, but but it's not going to show it because remember we also have to let the view know that things have changed. All right, so let's let's do that. Uh, so what what do we what do we want to do? Technically, it's just this one that has to change right now. So we might we might be able to do this. So what if what if we did my buttons at uh, row column? So what do I need here? I need the text from my model. So I want to update their text to be set text. All right. So 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 what's the text here? Let's go back into our into our model, and I see I have one that the string. Get the string for the button at a given location. That looks pretty promising. So let's do that. Uh, my game dot uh, get the string for the button at location, row, and column. All right, so the emulator came up, and let's see what I got. So if I click here, all right, so it's changing turns. Uh, interesting, all right? So, so that's cool. Uh, so we got things changed for some reason. It doesn't want to want to put another X here, uh, maybe because it it detected a win somehow. Uh, new game, of course, doesn't work. Uh, yeah, looks looks okay to me. So let's let's keep going here. 
So next thing might be to, to have it update what the game state is. All right, so just like I changed the text on the buttons, I could check check the uh, my game state text view, set its text. All right, and what do I want that to be here? There's also, uh, my model also has a string for game straight, for game state, so let's do that. Oops, string for game state. And that should that should update that. I'll launch that, and and while it's launching, I'm gonna go ahead and and try to deal with my my new game button. All right, so it's gonna be quite a bit simpler than than doing the others here. So make another button. Uh, it should probably be a field too. Private. Uh, it is a button here called my new game button and go ahead and capture that guy my new game button is a button find VBI ID r dot ID dot and I think I gave that one yep new game button and let's put on a listener so my new game button set the on click listener to be this also and now here, with an on click, perhaps the first thing that I want to do is to check to see if um, if that's been pressed. So, so I can say if the view, sorry, v is the view here. If its ID is equal to the ID of the new game button. So, uh, I mean, I could use new game button dot ID just to show you this, uh, the. The thing that I could do since it's just one of them, I could just hard code it directly. So r.id dot new game button would also be okay. Uh, so what happens if they click the new game button? Well, I guess a couple of things, right? So so one is is they want to uh, I want to to uh, reset the game, all right? So I have my game here, and I should have a method for that. So there should be one called reset game, and that's going to change all of the all the marks back to, to blanks. Uh, but I'm also going to want to tell the view to update as well. So I'm essentially going to need a for loop here, but where I, I tell all of them to change. Um, and you know what? I think the better thing to do would be just no matter what. So I'm going to copy this out and see how I split this up here. I'm going to have one loop that's just going to update the model, right? If just going to check to see if the button was pressed. And then another loop that does all the updates of the text. So, um, so update model is up here. And this is going to be uh, update view, or now update the view. All right, so what do we got? So X is turn. Now you notice I update my my, my game state. Uh, I've done that before, so that seems to be changing turns now. So let's see X O X O blocks X blocks O spaces out for a minute, and X goes in for the win. All right, excellent. All right, so we've got a win here, detected correctly. Notice I didn't even have to do anything because the model itself, when I press a button at a location, it automatically checks for a win for me. Uh, all I need to do is make sure that, that I update my game state. Click new game. Uh, new game doesn't seem to be doing things here, so no reset. So that, that could be a, a few different things. Uh, what I want to do to debug this now is to, to actually, um, let's see, so we have a listener here, new game button. Uh, looks good, but, but I'm going to do one, one more thing. And in here, I'm going to put in a log message. So let's go back to our slides and, and learn about log messages. Get caught up. All right, so again, we've, we've seen which one is, is pressed here. So if it was the new game button, we reset the game. Otherwise, um, we, we check the other um, check the IDs of the other buttons within the loops. And then finally, we, we, um, we set the text, and we update the, the game state. Uh, in this example right here, we did them all in one loop. We could have done that here, not, not, a, not a big deal. All right, so log messages. All right, so if you want to get test output, what are we going to do? Um, so wherever you you want 
um, output, you're going to call log.d. Well, why do we need to do that? Um, we just recognize that we don't have a console to use, right? It's, it's not sending back information to a console, but there is a log uh, and, a, and <coughs> excuse me, a log monitor uh, that, we, that we can use. Um, so the D here is just for debug. So log.d, and then I give it a tag, and then whatever after that is a string for, for whatever I want to, um, to print out, right? Um, and so the log, of course, is, is android.util.log. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and do this guy. So back here, um, it's my, my uh, game state button. I just want to make sure that it's actually uh, listening to the press. So I'm going to say log.d. And then I need a string here. I'm going to use TTT for, for tic-tac-toe uh, for, my, for my tag. And then I just want to say something like uh, new game button pressed. And that's it. Uh, import. And again, I want the simplest one here from android.util. And that'll come up. Now, if I run my program now, and it's going to run in the emulator, uh, then I should be getting output down here. Uh, you probably don't have a log cat yet uh, view. So let's go ahead and add one. So window, show view, other. And let's see. And within here, within Android, you might have to open that up. Uh, Tons and tons of stuff to, to, to look at here. Uh, the log cat is what you wanna what you wanna choose. Oops. Okay, so select it, click OK. So we have our log cat. And and what we see is that it actually well, I'm gonna uh, double click on this guy for a second here. We see that it's it's spewing out a little bit of information here. Uh, so let's let's go back to this guy. Clicking buttons, nothing happens. When I click the new game button. Nothing happens here. So that seems to be a problem. So what 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 did we do? So new game button is a button, find VBI ID, and we set as an on-click listener, we set this. Alright, so it should be uh, should be calling on click here. Uh, so we're asking whether the ID of the view that was pressed was equal to the ID of the new game button. Looks good to me. Uh, but let's let's be really careful here. So let's make sure that that the log is even working. Uh, so so I, I actually move this um, out. I, I copied this up so we just see if if any button is pressed and relaunch the emulator. Now let's see what we've got here in the in the log cap. So if I click, uh, it's not coming up here, right? So might have to do one more thing. And that's to just to let it. Um, some, I think there's a little bug in the emulator here. You may have a DDMS perspective. So this is the the, the Dablik Debug Management Service, I believe. If I click on this guy, if you didn't have it, you could go to Window Open Perspective, and you should be able to find it uh, under under Android there. So DDMS, bring this guy up, and I see my emulator is online. But if I just click on it, sometimes that makes it work better. So so I'm just going to click on it, go back to Java and see if I get any output now. So click. Uh, hmm, nothing yet. Maybe it's updating. OK, so I'm back here. Uh, I had paused it for a minute um, just to see what was going on. So we weren't getting any, any, any output in our log cat. Uh, so here's what I tried. Um, my emulator, I closed it, reopened it again, uh, tried the same one. Uh, seemed to work okay. Uh, still, still nothing here. Uh, I, I closed and reopened Eclipse again, and as I was closing it, I realized that I had another uh, another copy of Eclipse open. So I closed that one, reopened them both, and, and now it seems to be streaming out things here. So when I when I click the button, it act, it actually is is reacting in some way. Now this is a whole bunch of stuff, right? This is basically anything that's happening on the emulator um, that it that it's sending log information back about, right? So I don't want all of that. So what I'm going to do is is filter it. All right now, how I filter it is um, essentially down down here on the left here. I have save filters, and I can add a filter. Right, so I'm going to want to add that guy there. And uh, the log tag is what's important. Uh, that's that's obviously what, that's what we put in in our tag. I usually give the filter name the the same name. Uh, doesn't so much matter. 
and then we should see uh, that, that we'll be able to get just those things that are going to tell us something about button presses. All right, so let's let's try this here. So make a, a filter, TTT, by log tag, TTT. Um, nothing else here is I'm concerned about. So I'll click OK. And we see that that all along it's been streaming a whole bunch of stuff about buttons being pressed here in the new game button. Uh, so let's let's try to match them up and 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 see what's happening. So so back here, uh, so let me let me actually clear this guy. So I'm going to clear the log, bring it back up again. So I click, and it's going to say button pressed, button pressed. So any button should be able to give me that there, and new game. So it says that a button was pressed and the new game button was pressed, but it's not updating things. Uh, so that actually gives me some 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 clue as far as what's going on, All right? So button was pressed, this press, so it did reset the game, but for some reason the view isn't getting uh, reset. So let's let's take a look here. So I've I go down to where I updated the view, and I want all the buttons to reset here. So uh, ah, there there it is. Okay, so so here's my bug. Um, I'm looping over the rows and buttons, but then I'm only updating them if it was the one that was pressed at that instance, right? So certainly not what I want uh, if this is going to be doing all the updates. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that if statement. Uh, that should work much better. So I'll relaunch my emulator. All right, let's try it again. So we've got X, O, X, O. Let's see if we can get a tie here. Ah, uh, X1. All right, well, that's okay. Opportunity to reset. New game. Boom. New game button has been pressed, as we can see in our log, and it has reset. All right, let's let's check the, the tie, since I, I think that's probably the only one of the ones we haven't checked yet. So let's see, O is going to block. Uh, X is going to go here. Oh, O can go wherever he wants. I think we're in a tie. Uh, ah, wasn't thinking. How am I going to get a tie? Let's let's really play it here. So, so O is going to go. X is going to try to win. O is going to go here. X needs to block. Oh, man, I am just too good here with with my X's. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's make X not win. All right, so O is going to go here. X goes here. O blocks. X blocks. O blocks. X blocks. Let's see. O and then X. And we get a tie game. Very good. That's it for our controller. Works just fine. Uh, Hope you enjoy the lesson.